Y'all, it's the most wonderful time of the year. The Christmas season is upon us, and I know what you're thinking. What are the best gifts I can get for the artist in my life that they're actually gonna want? Because I can tell you with full assurance, it's not these. So if you're looking to get a gift for the artist in your life, or if you're an artist looking to get a little bit of wishlist inspiration, here are seven gift ideas an artist actually wants for Christmas this year. And while we chat, I'll also be painting this cozy little gouache illustration. Now for most of these, you are going to need to do a little bit of digging. When in doubt, just ask. Ask the artist these questions personally, or ask a close family member or friend who would know the answers. Gifts don't really need to be a big secret. Or if you do want to be a little more discreet, you can stalk their Instagram art account. You can find out a lot there. Number one, art books. This one we can break down into three categories. First, you've got books by a specific artist, for example, Tumble, The Art of Chris Hong. Next, you've got art of books for games and film, like The Art of Spirited Away, The Art of Spyro, The Art of Avatar The Last Airbender. And lastly, you've got educational books. No, not these. If your artist is over the age of about four, they probably don't want or need these. Maybe your artist is really into color theory, so Color and Light by James Gurney might be a really good option. Or maybe they're trying to learn anatomy, and Dynamic Human Anatomy by Roberto Osti is the ultimate book gift. Find out the artists they're interested in, the films they love, and the things they're interested in learning, and search up some books on Amazon. Now, if you are looking for a more eco-friendly option, or simply don't want to pay the hefty price tag that comes with a lot of art books, I get it, I'm poor, then look no further than A Books. This is not sponsored, I'm just a really big fan. You can find a lot of gently used art books that are still in really great shape and are greatly discounted. This is how I built up my art book collection without spending a massive amount of money that I don't have. Art books are really great for the nerdy, curious artists. Artists are obviously very visual people and art books can be a wonderful source of inspiration and education. Just make sure you remember who their favorite artists are from this section because you're gonna need that information for the third gift idea. Number two, supplies. It's time to pick out a bougie, fancy schmancy supply, but make sure it's something they're actually gonna use. If they're a clay artist, don't just go buy a set of luxury oil paints. It needs to make sense for them. What does your artist use? Maybe they are solely mixed media sketchbook artists. In that case, maybe pick out a nice Mossery sketchbook and have it customized with their name. Maybe they're a gouache artist and they're wanting to add some higher quality paints to their collection. In that case, Windsor & Newton has some amazing sets that are surprisingly affordable. I've also heard really great things about M. Graham for gouache too. Or maybe they love colored pencils and have had their eye on a set of Caran d'Ache pencils for months now. Most artists have a medium or two that they're particularly partial to, but either they can't afford or they feel guilty spending the money to level up their supplies in that medium. If you do a little bit of digging to find out what their favorite medium is, and then do a little bit more research into what brands are making better quality products, you're going to get them a gift they're really going to love. If you need a bit of help with this one, then feel free to ask some questions in the comments or message me on Instagram, and I'll do my best to point you to some good brands and products. Number three, art prints. Like I said earlier, your artist probably has at least one, if not several artists that inspire them. So you've already found out who those artists are, now you can check out their online shops and buy some prints from them. Prints come in so many sizes, from mini prints all the way up to jumbo prints that are several feet long. A good size to go for is around the 8x10 inch to 11x14 inch prints. When an artist really inspires you, you want to hang their work in your home. You want to put it in your studio to inspire you when you create. And if you want to go a step further on this gift, you can pick up a pretty frame for it too. And a lot of artists make smaller items that are really great for stocking stuffers, which we'll chat about in the seventh idea. Number four, setup. Having a designated space for your art can be so, so helpful for artists. Obviously you can create art anywhere, but having a cozy space for you to do your thing creates this kind of artistic sanctuary for an artist. Now you need to take into consideration the amount of space they have. If their studio space is also their bedroom, they probably don't have a lot of room for a really big creative setup. But here's a few things that might be a great addition. First of all, a desk. I would definitely encourage more artists to invest in an adjustable standing desk, one that allows you to be up and moving around or to take breaks and sit for a bit. FlexiSpot makes a lot of really nice desks in a lot of different price ranges, and I know there are a lot of other good brands out there too. Storage is another great gift. There's art carts, marker cases, paint and brush holders, 
So many art supplies go unused because they aren't out where you can see them or they get damaged because they're improperly stored. Having the right storage not only keeps an artist's supplies in good shape, but it also allows them to organize those supplies in a way that works for them and makes their space something that they want to keep coming back to. Number five, these ones are non-art related gifts that an artist still really wants. Now, a lot of people think that if you buy a gift for an artist, it needs to be an art supply. And that is so not true. I made a video earlier this year on building a creative practice, and a lot of the tips I shared there don't actually have to do with the supplies an artist is using. They're more about the environment around you, and that's what we're talking about here. Similar to the previous gift idea, this is about creating a cozy space that the artist wants to be in. Try to think about the senses. Taste, sight, sound, touch, and smell. These senses help them make this environment a space that they really love. So maybe you could buy them a candle to light while they're working. Mythology has some really nice ones that are safe for people and for pets with really cool themes like Lord of the Rings, D&D, pirates, or maybe your artist really loves listening to music while they work. A nice pair of Bluetooth headphones could help them really get into the zone while they create. Or maybe a new record for their record player. Buy them their favorite snacks to munch on while they sketch, or a little desk plant to keep them company, or maybe a pair of cozy slippers to wear while they're working. A lot of artists already have plenty of supplies for their creative practice, but these little additions to their environment can be such a game changer for them. Number six, money. I know, I know, a lot of people say this isn't a very thoughtful gift, and let me tell you right now, I 100% disagree. For some people, gift giving is just not their love language. They just don't know how to buy gifts for people. And if that's you, just giving cash or a gift card is one of the nicest things you can do. This keeps you from wandering aimlessly through the store aisles, and it keeps the artist from getting another gift they don't actually want. Or maybe you have an artist friend that's just hard to buy for. I get it, artists can be really picky. So giving them a gift card allows the artist to buy specifically what they want. And there's a lot of options out there for gift cards. There's Amazon, which literally has everything. <laughs> there's Michaels and Hobby Lobby. There's Barnes and Noble for buying art books. Or if they like listening to audiobooks while they work, then you could get them an Audible gift card. Or maybe they're looking to level up their art skills with an art class. A lot of art museums have classes you can purchase gift cards for. There's also online classes like Schoolism, 21 Draw, Domestica, Skillshare. Maybe you could gift your artist a one-year Schoolism subscription where they can take classes from some of the most renowned artists in the industry. Personally, I don't think these are thoughtless gifts. They're gifts that let an artist use them for what they really need or really want. Number seven, stocking stuffers. Now stocking stuffers can get pretty generic pretty fast. The way my family does stockings is by putting everyone's name in a bowl and whoever's name you draw, you fill their stocking. That way each person is getting a stocking that's a little bit more personalized to them. And there are a lot of stocking stuffer options for artists. Those favorite artists we talked about earlier, most of them have smaller items in their shops that are great for stocking stuffers. Things like stickers and sticker sheets, keychains, notepads, mini prints. Yours truly has a lot of these things in her shop, FYI. <laughs> these kinds of things are really great for bringing those creative vibes into other areas of your artist's life. A lot of artists love collecting stickers to decorate their laptops with, their sketchbooks, their journal, their water bottles, and supplies are another thing you can fill a stocking with too. Again, this will vary for different artists. For a clay artist, maybe you pick up a couple new texture tools. For a gouache artist, maybe a tube of Windsor & Newton gouache. Maybe you pick out some individual Copic colors at Michael's or some jelly roll pens. Michael's usually has a lot of really great buy one get one deals around this time of year for their open stock pens and markers. Or maybe you hit up a local craft show and get a handmade bookmark for their stocking to go with their new art book. You're buying gifts for a creative person, but this is also a really great opportunity for you to be creative. You get to become a little detective to find out what artists and mediums your person likes and be creative in what you get them. There are so many great gift ideas out there beyond the little Walmart art kits. I hope this gift guide was helpful for you and feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or need a little bit more help coming up with a good gift idea. Now let's chat a little bit about this painting. Y'all know I love painting interior environments. There are very few things that make me happier than designing a little clutter course scene. So this painting is for the cottage theme of my 20 illustrations challenge this year, and I was very, very excited for this one. I designed Bobble's Kitchen last year for a visual development class that I took, but I hadn't really made time to explore what Bits' home would look like. 
I figured the cottage theme was a great opportunity to get to know her space and to get to know her a little bit better too. Now Bits is a botanist. She's all about plants. She grows them, she discovers them and records them in her field journal, and she creates these beautiful little dried bouquets for the folks in the Meriki Meadow. So being a florist is her livelihood, but her passion is for the plants themselves. So for this illustration, I wanted to share as much of her story as I could without her actually being present in the scene. Using the tips I shared in my video on designing backgrounds, I began brainstorming and sketching. Thankfully, I had already built a model in SketchUp and created this kind of rough layout sketch of her sitting room, so I did have a little bit of a guide to go off of. But I did end up changing some things up though. So I wanted to put a lot of focus on the scholarly aspect of bits. Her little desk, the flora banner on the wall, her many, many books. <laughs> I could easily convey that she loves plants by the amount of potted plants she has just growing around and the dried flowers and floral paintings on the walls. But she doesn't just love flowers, she's obsessed with them and obsessed with learning about them. She has her field journal open on the desk with a little stem of greenery she's been recording in the journal. There's a lot of little papers scattered around the trash can from failed floral drawings and scribbled notes even some little curiosity jars on her bookshelf. I also wanted it to be obvious that this one's a Meriki Meadow illustration. I've spent a lot of time this year trying to hone in on the Meriki Meadow and its design, and one of the design elements I always include in the Meadow illustrations is overgrown plants. Plants growing across the ceiling, or poking up through the floors, moss growing on windowsills, or leaves coming down the walls. I'm also trying to bring in a kind of shape language for the Meadow pieces. There's always going to be some element of wonky shape design. I really love using this kind of sweeping S-curve and also warping the edges of flat surfaces. I want the Meriki Meadow pieces to have this sense of playfulness and whimsy in the shapes. This sense of imperfection and wear and tear with the overgrown plants and chipped wood and exposed bricks. All of these small elements that maybe people don't really notice, <laughs> but that silently kind of tie all of the illustrations together a bit. Or at least in my mind I do. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be honest y'all, this piece went through it. And I think there might have been a few tears, I don't know, kind of blocked it out. <laughs> All I know is that the bookshelf cabinet thing got repainted 2.3 bazillion times at minimum. The values were not going well, I psyched myself out with the lighting, it, it was a whole deal. <laughs> but I do think we got there in the end, I'm, I'm happy with it. I loved exaggerating the difference between the warm lamplight on the right and the cool moonlight coming through the windows on the left. I'm trying to be more explorative with the lighting in my scenes and giving opportunities for more than one light source. I just finished the illustration for the home theme. Coming soon to a YouTube channel near you. And I think I might have bitten off more than I could chew with that one with the lighting. I'm still not sure what I think of it. And now a word from our sponsor. Popping in to show you my new holiday treat sticker sheet, which will be available on Saturday, November 25th. This one's from one of my favorite sketchbook spreads, and I'm so excited to share all the cozy, delicious holiday vibes with you guys with a brand new sticker sheet. So make sure to mark those calendars. Anywho, in other news, I am officially 90% of the way done with my 20 illustrations challenge. I have two left and ideas for both. <laughs> so that's good. One of them I'm doing in my small sketchbook, so it's gonna be a little bit more of a mini illustration like the sky's theme painting. But for the creative theme, I've got something big up my sleeve planned for that one. Maybe not big in terms of size, but in terms of the idea. I don't wanna hype it up too much in case it's a total failure, but yeah, I'm excited for the final two themes. I think these are gonna be really fun. I am starting to think a little bit about 2024 and what goals or challenges I wanna set for myself next year. I do have a few ideas, but I'd love to know if y'all are starting any goal planning for 2024 also. The main thing on my mind right now is Christmas. I love Christmas. I am a Christmas gal. Bring on the lights, bring on the cookies, bring on the cocoa, slap on some Christmas hats. I am Santa's elf. I've had my shopping list planned since like June. <laughs> It's funny because gift receiving isn't really my love language, but gift giving definitely is. I love getting gifts for people. Not that that's what Christmas is about, but I don't know, man, I get really, really excited for the holidays. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope the gift suggestions gave you a good jumping off point for your holiday shopping or for making your own wish list. And I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this illustration. 
huge thank you to the Cozy Club over on Patreon for helping to support my art journey. Y'all are absolutely amazing. You've been such an encouragement to me during this challenge. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.